Welcome to The Topic, where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. As Texas begins the reopening process, HCC has formulated a plan to enable students to complete lab work and sp for the spring and empower them to make choices for classes for the fall semester. Dr. Kurt Ewan, Vice Chancellor of Planning and Institutional Effectiveness, gives us an overview of what students can expect. Good afternoon, Dr. Ewan. Hi, how are you, Todd? We appreciate you joining us. I wanted to talk with you a bit. You know, things are starting to reopen in Texas and a lot of questions come in from students. What's it going to look like in the fall? Before we get to the options, can you give us a bit of the rationale, which you had to go into thinking of how you were going to plan on reopening in a limited fashion? I would say, first of all, we reached out to students, faculty and staff, and we asked them about their present concerns, right, in a survey. And um, we asked them how comfortable they are coming into college, into campuses. And we learned very clearly that a lot of our faculty, staff, and students have some concerns that we have to build in in a variety of ways. We need to make sure our options are safe, which we would do anyways. But we also have to figure out how we're going to communicate the safety of those options to both faculty, staff, and to our and to our students. So that's one of the backdrops. The other backdrop is that um, we know that. On, community college students are about 10% less likely to be successful in a class that is online versus the same class being face-to-face. -face. Many of our students need the support of having the faculty member right there, especially in many of those front door courses that um, are, are really the, that can become barriers to student success if we don't help them get through that. And, and some do well in an online environment, some do not. And so making at least some limited amount of face-to-face -face opportunity uh, available to them is also important. So here's what we did. We knew, first of all, that we do a lot of lab-based courses where there's hands-on training. We knew that at the time we built the schedule, there were CDC guidelines that indicated how many people could be in a, in a space or how many could be in a gathering. And so we reduced the cap size the, the limit and the number of students into those sections of, of lab-based courses within those guidelines so that we can ensure that in this space, a student can be in there, they can be socially distant, they'll have the PPE, a face mask, that kind of thing that's appropriate for the course and they can make their way through that and we'll be less likely to have to cancel those in the fall if something were to happen. So then the question was, all right, how, how are we going to offer, what kind of options do we have? Typically, we have online, face-to-face, -face, and hybrid. We figured out that those trying to um, re-envision each of those and keeping their name wasn't going to help. We needed new names. Here's what we came up with. Online, anytime. Um, that is essentially the online courses that you've come to expect. It's what they call asynchronous. So, the faculty member can post something at nine in the morning. I can work on it at noon. My other classmate can work on it at 10 at night. And, and the calendar for that course is designed so that all the students and the faculty can make their way through the course on their schedule, their own time. The second option is online on a schedule. And this is based upon what our faculty did in the spring. Many of them had a class that was on a de designated day and time, and so they just ke kept that schedule, and they were available to students by video link at that opportunity to engage. They could maintain their traditional uh, lectures. Faculty told us that it was good to be able to see the student and see their concerns, and the student could ask about qu ask questions. The technology we have allows those things to be recorded. So students can go back to them. That's online on a schedule. And that what that means is the student selects the course and the day and the time that they want to meet. We've identified those dates and times and they pick one. So Dr. Ewan, let me ask you about the uh, online on a schedule. Is that yeah. considered a lot more or less like a live class, uh, just simply online? And you talked about having the uh, interaction with the student and the teacher. Is it done in a format where the teacher can see the student's faces and they do get that classroom interaction, but strictly online? Yes, yeah, so I would, I would de designate the first one as essentially online. All of these are, are somewhat remote learning options. The student and the faculty member are not in the same space 
actually for the first two options, online anytime and online on a schedule, the student won't ever have to come to one of our physical locations to complete the course. I think that's essential, especially when you consider the number of faculty and the number of students who express concern about coming to our location. Yes, it does. And, and I know there are two other options. Maybe you can real quickly break down those other two because they're important as well. No, so I already went through one of them. That's the labs. Okay, so that's, that's the fourth one. The third one is uh, Flex Campus. The size of the class that the student registers for remains roughly the same. 25 to 30 students, the student is going to have the option. So let's say they're in a math class. The social distancing requirements say you can only have 10 people in a room. We will provide technologically the student the opportunity to say, you know, that class on Thursday, I know that I'm going to have, I'm having difficulty with that material. I think I need to be there. That person can then put their name forward and depending upon how many others put their name forward, that then becomes their opportunity to be in class. Everybody else, so let's say it's Thursday and I feel pretty confident, but I'm still, I'm still going to class. I log into the class remotely through a video link. The faculty member can still see me. I can still ask questions. It's kind of like online on a schedule, but potentially nine of the students are in the actual classroom with the instructor. If the CDC guidelines go up and you can get more people in the room, more students can come in. If they go down because situation worsens, we can reduce it down or we can say, we're gonna go back to being remote. That was gonna be my next question. So we do have the flexibility built yes. in as the guidelines change because literally, they, in the beginning it was changing day by day, sometimes hour by hour, but now it seems like Things are letting up, but we don't know where the fall is going to go, if things could get worse or if they could get better. What you'll see, if you look at universities and colleges around the country, many of them have said, we're going to be open in the fall. Or they've just said, we're going to go completely online. We, we know that, that neither option really works for us. And the, student, the schools that are saying, we're going to go completely open, they have lots of fine language to say, based upon the realities at the time and that kind of thing. I can tell you that the model that we've developed is receiving attention from, from schools, from colleges and universities across the country. I had a representative from uh, Connecticut, the 12 community colleges in Connecticut, and they want to use our model and are, are wanting to take the video we've created and to blend it into their own situation because they, they see this as an option that will allow them to actually produce a schedule which ours will be out this week or early next week for students to begin registering for the, um, if they haven't registered already, to register for the, the various modalities that I mentioned a minute ago. You mentioned something about a video we had produced and, uh, and worked with you guys on to release. Yeah. I know we're working on a series of videos in the future to show the safe uh, learning, not just the safe learning options, but the social distancing practices that people Correct. can expect. Because when they do go back to campuses, things are going to be different than when we left in, uh, in March. That's right. When you come in every day, you're going to have to be screened. You're, you're going to get uh, a temperature taken. There's a series of questions that you'll be asked. The expectations about, around being socially distant. If you don't have a mask with you, we have them to, to give you um, all of that. There's hand sanitizers everywhere. We're cleaning everything. And we want people to know the amount of work we're doing to make the, the environment safe and them safe. Dr. Kurt Ewan, the Vice Chancellor of Planning and Institutional Effectiveness for HCC. Thanks for being here today and keep bringing us up to date with some important uh, things that people need to go going back to class in the fall. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. And we are going to return on the topic. We're going to be talking with Dr. Norma Perez, more about the safe learning options for the fall. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you in a few moments.
Welcome back to the topic on HCC TV. If you are watching us right now on HCC TV, make sure you jump on over to YouTube. You can find us on our YouTube channel. We would appreciate if you'd subscribe there. You can also find us on Facebook. And of course, download the audio versions of our podcast at hccs.edu slash podcast. We're talking today about safe learning options for the fall for HCC students. Things are gonna look completely different when we do go back to campuses. And talking about different options students have with fall classes. We're joined now by Dr. Norma Perez, HCC Vice Chancellor for Instructional Services and Chief Academic Officer. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, Todd. Dr. Perez, I wanna ask you about registering for the fall. As students and registration is now underway, as students register, um, we know there are different types of options. What's it gonna look like and how do they know how to go register for the different types of options that we have? Well, first of all, Todd, we've already been informing the student as to what those options are. And so uh, as a result of that, students are already familiar with the terms that we're already using. Uh, the the uh, schedule any uh, online anytime, online on a schedule, uh, flex campus, and then of course the last one, which is the lab lecture. And so students are aware of those. And so we're going to be, uh, and so we're explaining to them what each of those entails. And so when they uh, start to re-register, there'll be a description and they'll be able to know which type of course they wish to sign up for based on that. I know it's early in registration, but have you been able to gauge so far where the popularity with courses are? Are people liking the convenience of taking the courses online anytime? Would they rather have a set schedule to take it online or would they rather go in person? A lot of it I think is varies by student. Uh, and, and again, we created these based on feedback that we received both from students, faculty and staff. If you're online uh, anytime, you have to structure yourself. You have to ensure that you get on class and you do whatever you have to do in terms of assignments that you meet deadlines. By having the online uh, on a schedule, then you know that you have a set time. You've already committed that at, at at eight o'clock in the morning, your class meets and you're expected to be at that class and you've signed up for that class because you indicated that's the time that you're available. So, so it helps those students who really need some kind of structure. And so, there, so there'll be some students who will sign up for that. Uh, and then of course, there are those students who feel that they need that face-to-face. -face. So that was one of the feedback that we received from our students uh, in the spring semester. Uh, many of them made the adjustment to online, but many of them also said that they really prefer, they feel much more comfortable being able to see the, the uh, professor. And so we came up with a flex campus uh, 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 option so that those students who, who feel again uh, that they, they need to be present, there's a subject matter or topic that's being discussed that they don't quite understand and they're, and they're not understanding it via uh, remote learning. So this will be their option to actually see the professor face-to-face -face and ask whatever questions they may ask uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. It doesn't mean they can't do that online, they can still do that. Uh, many of our faculty have set up uh, virtual hours where, where the student and the, and, and the professor can meet face-to-face -face online so that the student, again, has the option of being able to talk to that professor uh, with any issues that they may have uh, throughout the semester. When this all started back in March, it seemed like we were kind of all forced to go online. Um, everything changed so dramatically, so quickly, and I know it was a monumental task for to getting faculty up to speed to deliver courses online. What has been some of the feedback you've been getting from students since we've been in the online world? At first, from our social media, it seemed like people were just confused in a way. Are things uh, slowing down or uh, are people getting more used to this online environment as far as the students themselves? I believe that they are, uh, uh, Todd. I, you know, one of, the, one of the feedback that we did receive from students was the fact that many of them had positive experiences online. And, and to me, that was one of the things I was hoping would happen. Because if they had that positive experience online, they were going to be more likely to feel comfortable taking online courses in the future. And, and I believe that that's what happened with many of our students. Of course, we still heard from students who would prefer the face-to-face -face, and they did find it challenging. Uh, uh, but overall, I would say that uh, many of our students had a positive experience and I think that that's why we're seeing that in, our enrollment in the summer seems to be 
moving uh, quite well. I was going to ask you that question next. Enrollment during the summer is improving, and that's, uh, that's a positive sign that people are getting used to this online environment. Another question we were getting in the beginning, and it seems to be addressed in the fall, are how am I going to take my labs? How do I fulfill my courses? That's been addressed. Maybe you can go over once again how the courses will work with labs. As you know, I believe that Dr. Ewing mentioned earlier that uh, we are at this time and during the summer, we're trying to catch up all the students in the spring that were not allowed to complete their lab portion of their courses. So we hope to have them all completed by the end of the summer, all of our students who had labs that were they were not able to complete. So knowing that we, we had to delay the start of those students and we, we wanted to work on what's a good plan where it would not, it would not, that would allow us to bring the students back on campus and not stop them from their instruction. And, and so we came up with a, a lecture lab. And so what we've done is again, created the, reduced the class size so that uh, we meet the minimum in terms of what the CDC requires. Uh, so that right now enrollment is up to nine per section for, for any course that requires a lab. Uh, again, we have the flexibility of adding more students if in fact uh, the, the CDC guidelines change, but as of right now, the, uh, it, the amount is actually uh, they're set up for six. And so we have some courses set up that way. And as, as we need more courses, we will add more courses to the schedule. One of the things that I hear from graduates of HCC and our alumni is that they have enjoyed their experience at HCC because we had the smaller class sizes and because they had that one-on-one -on -one interaction with their professor. It seems like if we're going to be even having smaller labs, this is going to be beneficial for the students for the giving, getting more of that one-on-one -on -one instruction or direction from their professor. And that is correct. There will be much more one-on-one -on -one in the lab and, and I, I think that there will be more uh, students will enjoy that. I think they'll pick up the skills much faster because there's less students in terms of, of uh, providing them the opportunity to use the equipment that's there. Of course, one of the, the challenges we're going to have is ensuring that as we, as we bring in different groups of students, uh, we, we have to ensure the uh, cleanliness, that we allow time for that, that the equipment is again clean before we bring in another new uh, group of students, and then of course, as well as the lab the lab situation itself. Well, Dr. Perez, I'm going to mention to you that I mentioned to uh, Dr. Ewan earlier, when we go back in the fall, things are going to look totally different than then, you know, uh, quite different, I should say, than when we left for spring break. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to this experience. Uh, we know that we've come up with a very unique fall schedule. And uh, uh, so far, I think that it's going to work for any student that, that has been attending HCC uh, again, we took their consideration, their feedback, kept their feedback in mind as we created the different options for them. So I think that we have something for everyone. And, and I do see us uh, being quite productive in the fall. Dr. Norma Perez, HCC Vice Chancellor for Instructional Services and Chief Academic Officer, thank you for being here today. And I know uh, you work tirelessly behind the scenes to, uh, to get this uh, work with this uh, administration to get this move forward. We appreciate the work you do. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for being here on the topic. Remember, you can download all the audio versions of our podcast at hccs.edu slash podcast. For the topic on HCC TV, I'm Todd Duplantis, and I'll see you next time.